welcome to the Recover You podcast with Kyleen and Patrick Terhune. It's here that we talk about sex addiction, betrayal trauma, mental, emotional, and physical health, faith, and anything and everything needed to recover you to your most authentic self that God created you to be. Welcome to another episode of Recover You. Hello, Patrick. Hello, Kylie. I'm very excited for this episode today. We're going to share a new part of our story that we've never shared before, I don't think, publicly. And so uh, the next couple weeks of November are going to be very special and kind of along this theme. And today's topic is on making amends. And we're going to just share a really cool thing that uh, we're excited to share with you. But first, I want to kind of start with a little bit of our story and how this was inspired. So many of you know that um, through Patrick's addiction, he spent a lot of money on the addiction, which uh, is not necessarily, you know, I don't know, common, I don't know, but um, not everybody does. I'll just say that. Yeah. And, but, but you did. And um, when everything started coming out, we started learning, we started learning about what, quote unquote, treatment was available, what resources were available. We learned more about addiction, about betrayal. You really um, absorb and felt really guilty <clears throat> about, you know, how how much of a trauma betrayal is on the spouses. You felt really bad about, um, you know, you started learning more than about how like sex trafficking it trafficking is intricately linked to the pornography industry and um you know how how it's just not you were contributing and putting money into an industry that was really negative right and then the outcome of that was a lot of trauma for a lot of people <clears throat> and so i don't know if this was in like your group that this was um, inspired or um maybe just from thinking it through and feeling guilty and wanting to you know, pay back because you had put money into the industry or whatever, but you really had this sense of like, I want to make amends and I kind of want to um, figure out, I think you had even mentioned like finding a, a specific direction that we could put our money that you could almost like pay back the same amount of money to kind of not undo, right? Because <clears throat> we had talked about the idea of making amends. Like I was like, I definitely don't want you to go back into any of the websites <laughs> to like say anything to the women, right? Like that would be horrible to like apologize to them or anything. Um, cause I don't want you to go back into exposure. Uh, but you know, and, and making amends is a little different, right? So if, if someone has had a physical affair, uh, that making amends is going to be a little different than online, uh, technology based, um, acting out. And so you had a real sense of like, okay, how do I do this? I put a lot of money into it. Where do we put our, our funds so that we can maybe make a difference in um, uno reverse. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, d- denial is a big part of this, a big part of this addiction. So I knew I was spending money. I didn't know to the extent of how much it was that didn't become apparent until um, um, after discovery, as I was totaling things up to get ready for the therapeutic disclosure and things like that. And so it was a significant amount of money. And you're right. As I, as I started to look into it, you know, I filled with a lot of guilt and I wanted to somehow give back. And, and so we started with my initial thought was the Tim Tebow foundation has this, this fundraising arm where they go in and they actually rescue, um, women and girls from sex trafficking. Actually, I think, I think, you know, guys too. I mean, I think that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So they go in and they do that. And we actually were able to, to funnel some money that way, but it, it still seemed like there, there was more that we could do. And I felt, um, that we were fortunate to be able to, to go into therapy. Both right. of us were, and there was a personal cost to that, a financial cost to that. And a lot of times what happens is, is the men or the, the addicted person goes right in and starts, starts getting that therapy and it's costly for families. And so sometimes it it can be a situation where, um, the men are in group and they're in therapy and let, let's just say like paint a scenario where maybe they did spend money on the addiction. Um, maybe they incurred some debt and now they're trying to get um, therapeutic support um, or even just, even if they're not getting therapy, they are going to group and they are getting this like really mm-hmm. um, in, intentional support about how to recover. Right. There, right. There's a lot of like resources out there for men to recover, but then on the women's side, like the, the financial burden of like, if, if, 
if they did spend money, if their husband is going to therapy or whatever, a lot of times it, that can create a situation where maybe that's more difficult for the betrayed partner to seek help. Right. Right. And so, and to, and because, you know, it is, uh, it does add up, right? When both of you are in there or you're paying down some debt or, you know, all of these different scenarios that can happen. And, um, and so we kind of talked about, you know, that and, and you, you, I think had mentioned something about. Yeah. The idea was, Hey, let's help the betrayed. Let's help mm-hmm. the betrayed uh, who are in, who are in a financially difficult situation, either just because of their income or because of where the addiction has has taken their family system. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how could we raise money and provide, you know, funding. And it was, I, I, I think, I think I might have said, well, why don't, why don't we pay for it or something like that was like the initial silly thing. You know what I mean? Not even really thinking about a charity per se. Um, and I didn't really think that through, that was just kind of coming out. Um, and so I think like, would there be people that we know that we could help or like, would there be a situation that maybe we we become aware of, um, or something Yeah, that's kind of, that was kind of your initial thought. Right. Right. So that's, that's kind of where, where it came from. And then I think like you you really were like, I want to match the amount that I spent in the industry on basically doing good counteracting it. Right. Because I, n- I never wanted to hurt people. Right. And yeah. then you start to, to look at, at at what the impact of an addiction does. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it hurts many, many people. And, and so I really, you're right. I wanted to, to kind of erase that side of it, you know, the, the in, in, in some ways help, help some people. And so that was a little bit of a nascent idea. And I think you took it and ran with it and started to, to turn it into something bigger. Yes. So then we, I don't really honestly remember exactly how this kind of came to be. Um, I, I don't know if I was like, Hey, what if we start a nonprofit? <laughs> I don't remember that conversation, but that's what we did. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, after having those conversations and kind of being like, yeah, that's a great idea. Like let's help the betrayed partners. Um, and, and just kind of going back into the need for that, um, there, there just is not in general. And I see this actually across the country, right? Like when I, when I have people that reach out because they found me on TikTok or whatever, um, what I find a lot of is like, there are, there are not CSATs in the area or there, um, you know, maybe there's a group for their husband. There's no group for the women, right? There's just so many reasons that there is a deep, deep need for recovery support, uh, very specifically for the betrayed partner. Mm -hmm. And so there's just a lot of reasons that it is, it is, um, you know, the, uh, the sex addiction itself is something that's fairly newly recognized and acknowledged. Mm -hmm. And I would say for the, uh, for the recent, I'm going to say recency, that's not right. (laughs) Uh, for how recent that is, um, there's a, quite a lot of support that has come up from that. A lot of men's groups, a lot of programs, mm-hmm. even outside of therapy. And then therapy has kind of that world has acknowledged it and has started to come around with the therapeutic model of treatment and all this kind of stuff. And then the betrayed partner, the the trauma aspect of it, that's newer. That's even newer. And right. so there really, truly is less support out there. And so we thought <clears throat> we would like to support betrayed partners and and, uh, you know, I certainly knew that I wanted to get involved in that and, um, start figuring out how I can support women through recovery. And, and you've heard me talk about being a coach and doing all that kind of stuff on here. And so what we ended up doing was starting a nonprofit. And the idea with the nonprofit is that when there is a significant financial barrier for the betrayed spouse to get uh, into support with uh, a coach or a therapist or or whatever um, that we are able to help them. And so we started this nonprofit. Uh, the name is Tara Hope Alliance. You can go to tarahopealliance.org. I'm just going to share the mission of Tara Hope. The mission of Tara Hope is to support women experiencing and recovering from sexual betrayal trauma. We do this by providing education and resources, as well as connecting them with and paying for practitioners who guide and assist them through the recovery process so that they can lead happy and fulfilling lives again. So what we do is we pair them with practitioners um, with a scholarship. And so there's an application process and there's a scholarship that is offered uh, when that is approved. And that's typically a 24 one-on-one session scholarship. So what that averages out to is about six months of uh, support. And so um, 
this was a process. Setting up a nonprofit was really interesting. Uh, it's not something that I've ever done before. And I, it was definitely a big learning curve. Um, it took me a little while. There's a lot of paperwork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and there's, you know, and then you're like, you have a lawyer and you, know, you kind of have to figure all this stuff out. But we got it set up and we really have not announced it publicly. So this is our big public announcement. So yay. You're some of the first people to kind of hear about it. I've like briefly dropped it here and there kind of, but it's really been running kind of behind the scenes so far. And so I'm really excited to kind of share with you that we have utilized this time that it has been running in the background to kind of figure some things out, like how it, how it works and, you know, kind of uh low scale iron out the kinks, so to, mm -hmm. so to speak. And, um, you know, know exactly. Okay. Well, you know, we have to, we have uh, contracts that people sign and, you know, just learning all of these ins and outs of like, how is this going to work? How is it going to be smooth? Right. And what's going to be the best uh, way to support these women so that it's most helpful and a, a, just an easy process, right? Like, so that it's not really bumpy and, 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 and it's effective. And so we've really kind of figured some things out. And so we've been able to help nine women so far, which is fantastic. really awesome. And then, um, one of the things that shifted was how we pair people with coaches or practitioners. So one of the things that happened was um, I was originally like, hey, like I know some of the therapists in the area. Let me just sort of figure out how to connect the billing and I'll pay for their sessions up to a certain point and, you know, that with the non through the nonprofit and all this kind of stuff. And we will just kind of figure out how this works. Um, we are incredibly, incredibly conscientious about who we pair people with. We really want them to be safe practitioners um, who know about addiction, who know about betrayal, who understand trauma, and who have different modalities, different styles of working with people outside of just talking. Uh, I think we've talked about that in other episodes, just how important that is to help process the memories and the triggers and that sort of thing. And so what we ended up doing was for ease of payments and consistency and just to have it be really smooth, we decided to bring on coaches to be Tara Hope coaches. So what that means is they are all, there's three of them now, which is very exciting. And you're going to hear from them in the next three weeks or interviews with the coaches. And um, each one of them is a licensed therapist or um, like APSAT or, you know, these different things. Um, but, but through Tara Hope, what they, they act as coaches. And the reason for that is so that they can work virtually. Now, um, if you were working as a licensed practitioner to like diagnose something, then that would probably be an in-office visit and you'd have to do something local and that sort of thing. But since they're not working in that capacity, they shift over into the coaching aspect and they can still do all of the different modalities, supporting people through disclosure, supporting people through triggers and, you know, navigating and creating boundaries and all these really, really important things for uh, the betrayed spouses. So that's sort of the structure of it mm -hmm. um, is the the women create or they uh, submit a an application. It gets approved. We connect them specifically to one of the three coaches. Um, and again, we care so much about who these people are. We, um, the, the coaches that we have are really, truly, they are so top notch. Every single one of them cares so much about their clients and about, uh, a positive, healthy outcome for the individual. Um, I, I just really can't state how cool these people are. <laughs> They're just, I'm like so mm -hmm. proud of them. They're so awesome. And um, and so it's just been a really cool thing to to as this has all been been set up. And so the reason we had decided to do this is that we are at a point where we are sharing publicly and officially opening it up for donations. And so the fact that we have helped nine women so far is awesome. And we would love to help another nine and another nine and another nine and another nine, because we know this is so, 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 so needed. And so we are opening up for donations. And that is why we are introducing this to the world. And, and again, we had to set up the infrastructure first, right? Like if I want to help someone, excuse me, if I want to help someone uh, recover from betrayal in Texas, you know, we needed to have the system set up where um, we have the coaches that can um, 
help everyone virtually Mm -hmm. and that that's the, you know, that that's set up properly and that we had the system running and all that kind of stuff. So that's where we're at. Nice. So how would, uh, and I know more is going to come out, but Mm -hmm. how would uh, somebody either request to be, uh, Sponsor. So you go to tarahopealliance.org and for right now, um, for, through the end of 2023, what we're asking for is donations. We are going to have more scholarships available in 2024. And mm-hmm. so if you are interested in applying, um, you know, those requirements are basically kind of what we mentioned at the beginning, right? That, uh, that you are someone that is going through betrayal and that without, um, financial support that, uh, you would be unable to, uh, pay for your own, uh, therapy or counseling or coaching. Mm -hmm. And, and the reason we say that is because there is, um, you know, I, it's like, uh, yeah, you want to help everybody. Right. Right, And it's, and it's so true. Um, and I really want everybody to get the highest level of care. And I think in my own experience, uh, when I invest in myself, when it's possible, of course, um, when it's possible for me to invest in myself and, and you see this kind of throughout humanity, right? When we invest in our healing or when we, um, engage in the process, you get, it's, it's being engaged in the process is really, really important. Right. Mm -hmm. And so whenever possible, we encourage you to, uh, even if it's like just, um, a little tight or a little uncomfortable, we do encourage you to invest in your own healing. Cause it is like we've talked about it's cancer, right? It's so important. Right. And it's so, so important to, uh, find somebody that you trust that can support you through this. And we know that a lot of times it goes beyond tight. And that's why this is here. It goes beyond tight. It goes to the point where there's so many people that are going through this. They're like, if I pay for counseling or coaching, um, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be able to pay for my kids to go to counseling, or I'm not going to be able to um, get the groceries that I need this week, Mm -hmm. or, you know, or we are putting all of our extra funds to, um, you know, pay back some of the debt. Right. And so we totally understand. And that's why, that's why the nonprofit is here because we want to, we want to support the people that are truly in need. So that I, I say that very carefully in that if you are somebody that, um, can, afford your care, please do not apply. And I only say that because I want to make sure that the spots that are available are given to people that truly, truly, truly cannot afford it because there are so many that that um, is true for. And we want to be there to support them. And and the purpose of this next four weeks, as you've articulated, is hey, we you know we need to continue to raise money. You know, it it does cost a lot of money to to to, yeah. to sponsor people, and it's something. It's that- about thirty five hundred dollars. Um, for it's it's about three thousand right. to three thousand six hundred dollars for a twenty four session scholarship. Right. And so right. we need, um, so in, when we have, when we look at the budget and everything, that's about the amount that is allotted mm-hmm. for each, each participant. Absolutely. So, each yeah. Budget. So this next four weeks, you know, articulating what the, what the charity does today and then hearing from each of the, of yeah. the coaches over the next three weeks. And so for those of you who have the means who can, who can donate and, and can really help out any little bit helps. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's very important. So just some numbers, like we said, 3,000 to 3,600 is a full scholarship. Um, you could also donate $150. That, that would be around one session. Right. Um, and you could donate less than that. And that's totally fine. You could donate $10 and we'd be so thankful. Mm-hmm. Um, really, there there is so much. I mean, there's we have kept our overhead so small. I, and I have done that really, really intentionally. We want everything that is donated to go towards the scholarships as much as possible. The fees that we have incurred outside of that have been so little in terms of like legal fees or setting up the website or things like that. And um, outside of that, like we are so, so careful of where we spend the money because we want to make sure that if you are donating, that it really is going directly to somebody to help them. Right, right. And so I just wanted to read um, just a couple comments from some of the women that have gotten the scholarships, just so that you know that these are real people and it is making a difference. So we have one um, comment that said, thank you so much. I am incredibly grateful for this. This is an incredible resource you're providing. Another one says, yes, there is no way I could have financially afforded counseling for myself. 
plus of the few counselors I did meet with on my own over the last year, she far exceeds them all. She does an amazing job. So that's really awesome talking about one of our Tara Hope coaches. Um, This is really incredible. I have felt like someone is physically pushing down on my shoulders for weeks and felt a quick sigh of relief knowing how the scholarship will bless us far, reaching the 24 sessions. That's awesome. That just feels really good to to hear that. Um, Kim is amazing. So thankful for being able to connect with her. That scholarship is truly a gift. And thank you so much for awarding me a full scholarship. I'm so excited and so grateful. When you are going through betrayal, it just feels like everything has caved in. And like that woman said, just um, that someone is physically pushing you down and that you are stuck. And when finances are a stressor on top of the type of betrayal that you are experiencing, that can feel absolutely overwhelming and play into that sense of stuckness. And, and, and that just makes the trauma so much harder and so much worse. And so we are just asking that if, again, if you have financial flexibility and you have listened to our podcast and, or maybe you are someone like Patrick, who is like me, and I really like I at some point have participated in the industry and I want to give back. This is a great way to do that. Great way for it. If you have some flexibility in your finances and you want to donate or you want to share this podcast with someone, maybe sharing it with um, pastors in your church, letting them know that this organization is available and it is here helping helping women and and helping um, you know beyond our local area. You know things like that. Uh, if you have counselors that you think might be interested, you know a lot of counselors that I've met that work in this, uh, you know. Uh, sex addiction and betrayal trauma and recovery world, they are so passionate about what they do and they really want to help people. Mm -hmm. And so they, they really, really care about these types of things and, and for your success and for your healing. And so if you know a counselor that's super passionate about this, feel free to share this uh, podcast and just let them know that there's a nonprofit available um, to help women. And then again, like I said, um, that in the spring, you know, we'll have more Uh, scholarships available. And so it's a resource that people can use to send people that are truly in need. And, you know, counselors get that, right? Like they, people will come to them and then um, they will communicate with their clients and, you know, kind of, kind of figure out, okay, this is like really, really like, they're not going to be able to come back, right? Like they can't do, um, they can't come back anymore because, you know, something's going on. And so when you become aware of those things, this is a great resource. And so what we're trying to do right now is just uh, grow enough that uh, we can really, we don't really want to turn that many people away. Right. You know, we really, we really want to uh, grow and develop enough that this is a huge resource for many, many people. And um, over the years that it just, uh, I don't even have a number in mind, honestly. Yeah, I know, yeah, the, I, I, the, like, I want it to be never ending, right? Like, I just want to help everybody. You know, what's the what's the the price of being healed? It's you know, it's it's limitless, you know, and and yeah. and, and the benefit, you know, of being yeah. healed. And so, yeah, you're absolutely right. You, you don't want to turn anybody away, um, you know. And and it's important that that people understand. And I think you articulated that as this charity is already helping people. Yeah, and it's already it's not it's not an idea that hasn't done anything yet and yeah, hasn't no. gone anywhere. Well, it's a nonprofit that has helped nine women already right. connect right. with really qualified um, counselors and coaches and practitioners that are helping them move through various different phases of their recovery. Um, right. With and, and I'm so excited for you over the next couple of weeks to meet some of the coaches because mm-hmm. they are so individual and so awesome. And I actually right now, and, and this is something I kind of, before we wrap up, I want to say too, I have a vision for this that is much bigger than what it is right now. Mm-hmm. Um, this is like the baby, baby phase of the nonprofit. And um, one, one of the, the one piece of the vision is that there's eventually, I hope going to be like a community where everyone that is involved in the scholarships can connect with each other and that the coaches can provide um, some extra resources and videos and support and tools. And, mm-hmm. and so that's kind of, you know, in the future kind of far away, but then also, um, I would love to just see this become an independent, um, an independent thing, like with, with legs that kind of runs itself and, yeah. and people that are really invested in wanting to um, help it grow and help it um, help run it and be creative. And maybe, maybe somebody that's listening is like, you know, I don't have a lot of money to donate, but I'm like really good at marketing. And I'd like to set up like an Instagram page for it or something. Like that. Totally. Like we don't have any, 
<laughs> we don't have anything like that. Mm -hmm. This is so baby. And so, um, yeah, any way that you feel like, oh, like I'd really like to contribute in this way, right? Like there are so many ways that you could support the nonprofit that we would be so, so grateful for. So if you are listening and you're like, I have this talent, do you need this? Reach out because the answer is probably yes. <laughs> we could use the help. Mm -hmm. And what I would really love is to partner with people that are really passionate and are like, yeah, I have this gift. I have this talent. I, you know, I can do this and I can do that. And and just create this into a big organization that thrives and that is well-rounded and that is helping the community. So if you're interested in any piece of this, um, please go to www.tarahopealliance.org and you can learn a little bit more about us there and you can check out our coaches. And again, we're going to have those episodes with them, but you can read about them on our website. Um, but if you go to tarahopealliance.org forward slash donate, that is open now. And again, it's about $3,000 to $3,600 for, um, for one scholarship participant for a, a course of about six months of support. And so what we are thinking right now that would just be totally awesome is that by the end of 2023 to be able to raise about $10,000. Uh, and so just to yep. kind of start with that benchmark, if you are interested in supporting us, just reach out or go to the website and check it out. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and ask me as well. But Patrick, do you have any any other thoughts? No, I, I think it's, you know, the the you, you never want to guilt people, but this is a really great way for for addicts to give back. I mean, it really is. And, and, you know, I think that is a, a crucial part of, of, of an addict's recovery is to pay it forward somehow, you know, somebody stepped in and helped you out mm -hmm. and somebody was able to kind of come alongside you in your moment of need and, and help you, you know, move forward. So sometimes you can lead other groups or you can do different things, but this is also a, a very effective and, you know, a way of, of giving back as well. Yeah. And just to kind of tie it right back into the beginning, like the whole reason that we started this was the idea of making amends and helping people get into recovery and really being able to, I don't want to say reverse engineer, but like counteract kind of what, like what we said at the beginning, the, the time, the energy, the money that was put into something that hurt people. And so Tar Hope was created to help people. And so if mm -hmm. that is your passion, if that is something that you are interested in, we would love to partner with you, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have an idea, that would be really helpful. If you are somebody that knows how to run nonprofits <laughs> and has done it, I would love to talk to you because this is brand new for me and I'm doing my best, but uh, you know, I am totally willing to learn. And so if you have ideas or thoughts or experience that you think would be helpful, I am so, so open to that. So please just reach out. And again, if you'd like to donate, just go to tarhopealliance.org forward slash donate and any amount at all. I mean, even a couple dollars would be so, so welcome. So thank you to everyone that's listening. I hope that you will check out the next three episodes so that you can meet our coaches. Mm -hmm. Those episodes are going to be on just general topics around addiction and betrayal. So they're going to be super interesting. But what I wanted to do was give you the opportunity to hear from these wonderful coaches so that you just really lean into and understand how smart and how kind and how wonderful and how giving these individuals are that we pair these scholarship part uh, participants to. And so you're going to get a chance to kind of meet them. Um, they're going to share, they're going to talk about things that they're really passionate about um, over the next couple of weeks. So we hope to see you there. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this podcast interesting or helpful, it would mean so much if you leave a five-star review or post a screenshot and share on social media. We are on a mission to share the message of recovery and you can help get the word out. If you know a friend who could use this podcast, please share it.